Please listen carefully. Hey guys, it's Dan here from Canadian Craft Beer Collective. Very excited today. We are at Phillips Brewing in our wonderful province capital, uh, Victoria, British Columbia. And uh, we're sitting here with none other than Matt Phillips himself. So before we get into this wonderful beer, I just want to ask um, about Blue Buck, actually. Right. I want to ask, first of all, I want to tell you, if I had one beer to drink the rest of my life, it would be Blue Buck. I'm sure you actually get that from time to time. Uh, and number two, I would like to ask kind of, when did it start? Uh, what's the story behind it? And also, did you ever think it would get as big as it is today? Yeah, right, well, because it is our number one seller. Um, Blue Box has been one that we've been doing for, uh, oh, I guess 2007 we started, but it didn't start as Blue Box. Um, the, the history of it is, is really that we, uh, we, we won the contract to supply the beer for a folk festival here. And, um, and we looked at our lineup and we were really brewing pretty uh, esoteric beers, lots of IPAs, uh, big dark beers, whatever the case might be, not festival beers. Um, but at the same time, we wanted something that was really interesting for the festival goers. So, um, so it, was, it was kind of, uh, that was the mandate. Let's build a beer that's going to be perfect for a festival that you can, that has a, a, a big complex flavor profile, but uh, is yet really drinkable and, uh, and will work any time of the year. And so that was the brief. And, and it kind of so happened that at the same time, uh, our delivery vehicle, which was a 1956 uh, milk truck. I remember uh, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I'm going to go ahead and pour it, by the way. A very, very, very elegant old truck, uh, but not so roadworthy. Got, uh, well, it got, actually got hijacked by, uh, by uh, we assume, kids and joyrided in. And, and then when the cops found it, they decided that. Um, that maybe the bigger crime wasn't that it had been used for a joyride, but maybe that it was on the road at all. So they yarded <laughs> it off the road, and, uh, and I was pretty devastated. I was pretty emotionally attached to this truck. Um, I'd driven it all over the province. I used to drive it wearing a sleeping bag because uh, it had so many, you know, it'd be uh, going over the pass and it'd be so cold and, and snow would be coming right through the truck. And so um, it, it, those are the kind of things that endear you to a vehicle, that kind yeah. of misery. And, uh, and so I wanted to get it back on the road. So the idea was, well, we're going to do this beer for the festival. It's going to be a great beer. Um, let's put a nickel in the jar for every time we sell a pint of it at this festival and, and maybe we'll get it back on the road, a resurrection of sorts. Um, and, uh, and that was great. And, and, and you built a brewery from that jar. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, but, but that was how we started with it. And, uh, and it really caught on. People really liked it. And, you know, not a huge surprise that people really liked it. Because yeah. uh, it, it really is a, a beer that showcases some, some really nice bright hops. Has a nice structure and body to it. Um, finishes nicely. It's, it's kind of a really complex round beer, but it doesn't really... Um, tax the palate. You can you can drink three or four palate, uh, pints of it and and, and st palate. Palate. <laughs> that's always what we hope for. But, exactly. Um, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, I know it's, it's really uh, pretty quaffable and yeah. but at the same time complex and challenge challenges the palate but doesn't overwhelm it. So we weren't surprised that it did well, but of course you're always you know. Uh, I would never have thought uh, that it would do as well as it has. Fair enough. Um, well, let's let's give it a try. Yeah, well, let's let's do that. Cheers. Yeah. I should finish my story though at some point. Because at this point, it's still called Blue Truck. That's right. It was Blue Truck to begin with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, anyway, so we got about a year in, and uh, and it was becoming our number one seller at that point, and uh, and that's when we got into a, a bit of a legal challenge from uh, one of our, our competitors, and so yes. we had a renaming contest, and um, and and Blue Buck became the. Uh, the winner, mostly because it sounded the same, and and our graphic artist already had a fantastic image. So, uh, <laughs> so it was happenstance that the image was already yeah. done, um, and uh, we just loved how it looked and how it felt and how it sounded. So that was where Blue Buck really became a, a brand. So it was I love it. Kind of. Uh, and you know what? Awesome. You know what? To me, it's it's always been the beer that um, <clears throat> you kind of alluded to it before, where you can have one beer and you can enjoy it, and it has complex flavors, and you can really sit there and and really. In, in, enjoy it for the beer itself, or you can have a lot of them. Yeah. Um, this is something that, it, it's one of those unique beers that is, it's sessionable, it's drinkable, but at the same time, it's wonderfully complex and, and you can enjoy it for various different reasons. So, um, everyone out there, uh, this is now available in uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, it's available in Thailand, uh, soon to be China, and soon to be uh, throughout Europe as well. And uh, if you guys are looking for it, ask for it, and we will make sure we get it to you. Cheers. Cheers.